Hello, welcome back, Matt from MrLiker.com. I've got a slightly different video for you today, so stay tuned. Okay, so if you've seen this channel before, you'll know that it's mostly turning into a bit of a review channel where I'm talking about the best lens, the best camera, why you should buy camera A versus camera B, things like this. So after sharing all those camera reviews, lens reviews, I'm now gonna tell you something which may go against everything I've told you in the past. Before I tell you what I'm about to tell you, it's not gonna stop me from posting future lens reviews and more camera reviews. So this is just a sense check before we continue with more camera and lens reviews going forward. And that question is, how important is the camera that you use in terms of the final photo? So what I've done, I've made a short list of things that I think are important in terms of the final photo for me. And then we can look at each one in turn and see kind of how important on the must have requirement list is the actual camera. Because after doing a photo shoot yesterday, it really kind of made me think the camera isn't really that important. So I'll do kind of a case study, I guess you could call it. So I'm gonna look at the last three photos I posted on Flickr and we'll take each one in turn and kind of break it down in terms of what's important in that photo. Then nothing special, it just happens to be the last three photos that I posted. One is a portrait, one is a landscape, one is kind of street photography, I guess. Um, so a bit of variety and I just wanna stress, I don't think these photos are anything special. I just happened to post three photos in a sequence which were all different to each other rather than kind of a portrait, a portrait, a portrait, as I normally post a lot of portraits. And I think each one's quite a good example in terms of what may or may not be important in a final photo. Okay, so this video is slightly different in terms of it's my opinion more than kind of facts written in stone. Camera X costs this much money and it does X, Y, Z. That's all kind of fact and I'm just repeating the facts. What I'm going to tell you now is based on my opinion from 10 years of photography. You may agree, you may strongly disagree and, and there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just giving you my opinion from using lots of cameras and lots of lenses and having now hopefully a bit more experience in terms of photos and what makes a good picture. So if I ask the question to you, what is the number one kind of key ingredient needed to make the best possible photo? What would you say it is? Let's give ourselves some possible answers. We could say the camera. Is that the most important thing in the final image to make the final image? Number two, the lens. I've got a list, so excuse me if I look down. Number three, composition. Number four, the kind of emotion or mood in the picture. Number five, the timing of the photo. Or number six, the light. And I've added this as maybe an extra. Number seven, the edit, or the photo editing. So seven items. So I look at my work and what's important to me in a final photo may be different for you. Your main thing might be composition or it might be color or it might be the decisive moment catch, catching the exact time of something happening. Personally, after looking at my images, the number one thing for me is lighting. Good lighting and I'm happy, bad lighting and I have zero interest in taking pictures. I still try in bad light, but the photos I enjoy are when the light is nice in the photo. So for me personally now, the number one thing for all my photography to make the best possible photo is light. Number two, the second most important thing in my photos to make the best possible image is mood or emotion. Now I guess this works more for my particular work which is people photography more than say if you do landscape photography or some other genres of photography, macro photography, there's probably less emotion or mood in a macro photo. You might have quite an emotional bug or something in your image, but generally speaking, I guess mood and emotion, a lot of the time we'll talk about people photography. I think, comment below if you think different. So for me, second most important thing is a mood, the mood in the picture or the emotion. Number three, I think composition. I do enjoy composing my photos. I'm not saying I'm any good at it. I just enjoy the composing process of taking a picture. A good example of my frustration with composition is when a camera doesn't give you clear view of the final composition in the image. So some cameras, especially more so film cameras, they'll give you kind of a vague guide of what the final image and composition cropping may look like, but then you get the final picture and it's, you thought the picture was here and the picture might be here, things like that. So that's kind of really annoying because I, pur I purposely frame the image here because that's where I wanted the image to be taken. So if the final image is down here, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> 
So a pet peeve for certain film cameras. Moving on, number four, the lens. Now I'm not talking about it needs to be a Leica Apo lens and I'm not talking about it's got to cost more than £10,000 or £1,000 or made by Zeiss or whoever. I'm talking about focal length. The focal length is much more important than the manufacture of the particular lens. So it doesn't matter if you've got a 50mm by Leica and it's the latest Apo version or you've got a 50mm lens by, I don't know, Minolta or Nikon and it costs £50. A 50mm lens will give you a certain view and a certain distortion and a certain look that a 28mm lens cannot do and a 90mm lens or 85mm lens cannot do. So when I say lens is important, I'm talking about the lens focal length. Number five for me, I've got editing. If you're reasonably good at editing, whether it's just applying a simple uh, Lightroom preset to like I do for like, the base edit for all my pictures, I just apply one of my Mr. Leica presets and then I finish the photo in Photoshop. I don't think you need to be amazing at Photoshop, but I think a basic edit applied to a photo will make a huge difference in, ter in terms of the final image. So for me personally, for example, just by flipping an image to black and white instantly for me makes it a lot stronger in most instances because it takes away all the kind of distractions of the colours in the photo. So again, it's probably an arguable point. So you can, I guess you could say if you shoot black and white film in an analogue camera, then you don't need to edit so much. And I guess I'd 100% agree, you can get film scans straight off the scanner, which look pleasing to the eye almost ready to kind of post as you want them. But I think for digital especially, I think they need a lot more work in terms of at least making them black or white for me or doing something just because the raw files are so flat, they're not very appealing straight out of camera. You could shoot JPEGs. A good example of this would be the like M8 in-camera black and white JPEGs or the like M9. Those JPEGs straight out of camera look fantastic and in that situation you can kind of put a line through the editing on the on the list of what's important but if you shoot raw i think editing is important so lastly for me the sixth most important thing in terms of ranking to make a nice picture is a camera <laughs> now this is assuming you have a camera whether it's an iphone or whatever this whole concept assumes you have a camera but in terms of the type of camera that's number six. It doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone, it doesn't matter if you're using a Leica, it doesn't matter if you're using a Nikon, a Fuji, a Sony. As long as you have a camera, you're three quarters of the way there in terms of making your final picture. And then the one I didn't include was timing. Um, for my type of work, timing is less important because I pose models to hold still so I can take the picture that I need. So there's less of that decisive moment but for my wedding photography, timing is important and the timing is more important than the light and it's more important than the composition. So I think my list is based on my work, which is mostly portraiture. If I flip that around for weddings, I would say emotion number one, timing number two, lighting, I guess, number three, and then the rest kind of fall in below. You need the lens to get the shot, you need the camera that can work in those conditions, blah, blah, blah. But I guess for this example, I'm thinking about my work, which is mostly portraits. Okay, so let's just cover, you need a camera. When I say you need a camera, it needs to have certain criteria to make it work in this kind of very generalized uh, example slash argument. That being, it will be able to capture the picture that you want to take in the situation that you're working in. What I mean by that is, if you've got a camera with maximum high ISO of 400 just for argument's sake say say one of the early medium format cameras where the maximum high iso was really low if you then live in a situation where you're mostly taking photos in kind of low light dark conditions then that camera is no use to you at all because you cannot get the picture when you need to get the picture so in that instance you need a camera that will work in the light that you have number one and then number two, you need a camera where you will have it with you to be able to capture the pictures that we're talking about. So obviously something like a smartphone is much more likely to be on your person day to day than say a big 
Hasselblad medium format H camera, H system camera as an extreme example, both ends of the scale. And then for me, number three, the camera needs to be versatile. That means it can capture the shots that you want based on the lens fitted on the camera. So if you've got a fixed lens camera, it's going to be less versatile than if you have an interchangeable lens camera. So for example, if you're using only an iPhone, you have a fixed 28mm lens, and that means it's less ideal for shooting, say, telephoto shots, as, a, as an example. If you're using a small point and shoot camera, sometimes the widest the lens will go is, say, 35mm or 28mm. That means you're always limited to not being able to shoot wider than interchangeable lens cameras for me are the best option because you can then fit any lens and get your shot. Okay, so that's my general thought process. So now if we look at three example photos and I'll talk you through the what is important in each image for me. Okay, so photo number one is a landscape photo. And for me, the most important thing in this image is the composition, probably number one, followed by the lens number two. If I didn't have a wide angle lens, I wouldn't have been able to take this picture. And if I didn't compose the picture the way I did, it may not have been as visually appealing to me for the final image. I believe the editing makes the photo stronger. If it had been taken as a low contrast color photo, it may have had perhaps less impact than being a high contrast black and white photo. Timing, mood and emotion don't really count in this example. And I think the strong directional light helps the final image by helping give a more high contrast look. I could have taken this photo with an iPhone and I did. <laughs> or I could have taken this with a more exotic film camera or digital camera. I actually shot it on film. This is the film version that you're seeing. So in this example, was the camera important? No, I could have used my iPhone, I could have used a digital camera, a film camera, and all of those could have been a basic iPhone or top of the range iPhone. It could have been a cheap digital camera or an expensive digital camera or a cheap film camera or, fun or expensive film camera. So the camera isn't that important in this picture for me. Okay, example number two is my kind of street photo. It's not really street photography because it's not taken in the street, but it is a person on a path. So for the images I take, it's quite close to street photography. So what's important to make this photo how it looks? I would say number one, lighting. I was cycling and the light caught my eye straight away and I stopped the bike and got my camera out. I'd say the second most important thing in this photo is potentially composition. I enjoyed kind of framing up the shot. And then I think the third most important thing in this photo is the timing. I then waited for a person to go exactly into the part of the scene that I wanted before I clicked the shutter. I took a photo with the person and, went, and without the person and I much preferred the, the person in the shot. Did the lens really matter? Focal length wise, not so much. As long as it was kind of within a certain range, it could have been probably 28mm, 35mm, 50mm. I could have still got a similar shot. 28 mil the person would have been much smaller in the scene so the 50 mil lens that I used for this photo kind of worked quite well if I'd been shooting with a 28 or a 35 I would have pressed the shutter with the person closer to the camera making the person larger in the image and you could still get the kind of the feel of the person being further away by the fact that the lens is wider if that makes sense again was the edit important the black and white probably helps the photo but but again it's personal taste I, I like black and white and I boosted the contrast in the final image to get the look that I was kind of visualizing when being at the location on the day. Was the camera important? Not really. I was, I was shooting on film, so again, that shows that it could be a very low megapixel um, digital camera. It could be a cheap film camera. It could be an expensive film camera, or it could be an iPhone. All of those would give you roughly the same image. If you kind of squint your eyes a little bit, um, and you're not kind of pixel peeping. I guess what I mean by this is I could have taken the photo with the top of the range like a camera or Hasselblad camera and not had the person in and it might have looked nice. Say, and then say I finished the film in my camera that I was using or my battery died on my top of the range digital camera that I was using. So all I had left was the smartphone. And then just by chance, the person walks through the scene and the only thing you've got is your smartphone I can guarantee, based on my personal taste, the photo shot with the smartphone with the person in the image is going to be better than the best Hasselblad or Leica camera photo shot just before without the person in the image. And that's what I'm trying to get to in this video in terms of you need a device to capture the image, but
but when it comes down to the basics, you really don't need the best of the best to get a nice photo. The argument against that would be if you shoot, say, landscapes and you have all the time in the world, if you get a nice photo with your iPhone, you could get a nicer photo with a top of the range Hasselblad, for example, digital Hasselblad. If the scene's not changing, I know landscape top with lights can be changing all the time, but let's just assume it's a blue sky day and the light's not changing. If you then compare an iPhone photo to a cheap digital camera to a top of the range digital camera, you will of course get a nicer photo if you're pixel peeping for the top of the range digital camera. But I think for me, that's when you're trying to improve on a already nice photo to take it to the next level. I'll come on to that a bit more in a second. I'm kind of ahead of myself. Okay, and then the last example is a portrait of Jen or Jenny that I took uh, yesterday. And this was the photo that sparked this whole idea to make this video. So I shot this photo with a Leica M240 and a vintage 50mm lens, which is a Nikkor HC 50mm f2 lens. Not that it really matters. All we need to probably think about is it's taken with a 50mm lens. So what's important in this portrait? For me personally, number one, emotion or the mood in the picture. In portrait photography, the feeling of the image is much more important than the resolution and the, the megapixels and things like this. And again, this is what sparked this kind of idea in my head that what's important and what's not important. So I'd say number one, it doesn't matter how good your camera is, how good your lens is, how good your lighting is. In portrait photography, if the feeling of the image is not right, then the whole image is kind of in the bin. If the model started coughing just as I took the photo, my lighting might be nice, my camera might be nice, composition might be as I want it, the lens may be the lens I feel I need in terms of focal length. And then if the model does something unexpected, which is adverse towards the final image, then the whole photo is bin. So for me, number one is the feeling or emotion in a portrait is the number one thing for deciding whether it's a keeper photo or a, a kind of a bin photo. Number two for portraits, lighting. Lighting is so important. <laughs> uh, you can kind of make or break a model just by lighting. And what do I mean by this? Models, even though by their name, you would think they're super confident. Most models are self-conscious about how they look. And if you light them badly, it will kind of knock their confidence and their energy straight away. If, if you're showing them photos on the back of the camera that don't look nice or make them look worse than they look in real life, they're not going to be your kind of best friend. <laughs> and it's going to kind of knock the confidence and then it's kind of a vicious circle. Then they'll just start to think bad things in the head. Oh, I don't look good. This looks bad. This looks bad. This looks bad. And it's kind of a downward spiral in terms of you're going to struggle to get it back in terms of getting nice images if you've lit them badly. I'm not saying I've lit this particular image well. I'm just saying from the feedback from the models, they were happy and I'm happy. So, so that's all that's really important for me. If the client's happy and I'm happy, then that's kind of the main thing. So mood or emotion number one, lighting number two. Now this is slightly different for me. Lens number three, focal length of the lens. Again, you can change how a person looks completely by changing your focal length. You could put a 24 or 28 mil lens on and make them look a certain look, which I was doing yesterday. Um, you could use a 50 mil lens for kind of a more standard look. Again, like this photo, this was shot with 50 F2. Or you could put a long lens on and make them again look different to how they look in reality. What do I mean by make them look different to reality? What I mean is, if you're smart, <laughs> I'm not saying, <laughs> Again, I'm not saying I'm smart, but if you're smart, you can use the distortion from certain focal lengths to change the body shape or the face shape to make it more pleasing to the model, or if you get it wrong, less pleasing to the model. So a simple example would be, if you shoot up at a model, they're gonna look taller, and generally speaking, slimmer. If you shoot, ja if you shoot down at a model, they're gonna look generally a bit stumpy and less kind of long and elegant looking. So slight angle change of the camera and tilt uh, top to bottom, left to right, you can change how their body looks completely. Get it right and they'll love you, <laughs> get it wrong <laughs> and they really won't be your best friend. Um, certain focal lengths work in certain situations better than others. So that's why I'm saying the lens is important. 
the focal length of the lens is really important. I'm kind of a prime lens kind of shooter guy. I've got nothing against zooms. And in this instance, if you had one zoom lens, that would kind of cover you for, for example, 2470, a popular uh, wedding lens. That would cover you for different amounts of distortion from 24 through to 70. So generally speaking, you should be able to get the image that you like and they like from that one lens unless you wanted a longer lens, and then I guess you'd use a second zoom, a 70 200, for example. Personally, I just use prime, so I'll be using probably 28, 35, 50, 90, something like that. Usually less than that. So for me, the lens is important for portrait photography. Number four, composition. Composition for me is important with my portraits because I can crop in what I want in the picture and say the, the strength of the model, and I can crop out the what I don't want in the photo. That could be distracting elements, or it could be potential weaknesses of the model, uh, things they are kind of worried about. So I could talk about that all day, but I guess in simple terms, you can crop in to either simplify the image or to hone in on the, the prettiest bits of that client to make them as happy as possible. I guess I do that without kind of thinking or telling them. I just show them the picture and hopefully they like it. And then again, I think next, editing. Again, you can make or break a person or an image just by good editing, standard editing or bad editing. But again, if you shoot raw digital files, I think you need to do something to the photos to get them to where you want to be. If you shoot, again, in my example, black and white film or even color film, you can get the final photo straight off the scanner. So in that instance, again, you don't need to include editing as a important step. And lastly, again, in this example, the camera. I needed a camera to capture this moment. And in this particular example, you need the camera to work in the lighting situation that you had. If I was using, for example, flash photography, then I couldn't use my iPhone because my iPhone doesn't sync with my speed lights, for example. I'm gonna share a post on how I lit this photo on Patreon for anybody interested in kind of wanting to learn how I like my portraits. But the camera needs to work in the situation you're in. If you're using lighting, it needs to either work in low light. If you're using, say, if you're making the most of the available light, thereby needing a good output at high ISO. If you want to use strobes, then again, you need it to sync with the lights that you're working with, so not an iPhone. And then it needs to either have a fixed lens with the focal lens that you want to work with, or be an interchangeable camera system where you can fit the lens of the particular focal lens that you want to take the picture. Okay, so I know this is a different video to my normal style, but in this video, I'm trying to break it down into, I guess, opinions, because it's, it's not really a hard fact, my thoughts might be completely different to your thought, but I'm just trying to explain my thought process and it may help you with your photography or at least be a talking point in the comments below to kind of slate me and tell me my thought process is totally rubbish. I guess what I'm trying to get to is, although I enjoy using Leica cameras, Hasselblad cameras, other nice film cameras, various nice lenses, whether it is Leica, Zeiss, whoever, I think to get 90% of the image, you just need the basics, which are the light, the composition, the mood or motion, a lens and camera, which will allow you to get the shot. And then to up your game, if you then want to take it to say something that you can publish in a magazine and have it high resolution on the front cover or billboard level, then I think the best lens is important. And then I think the best camera is important. So the likes of the new Leica M10R that we talked about in the M10 video, these are really important if you're trying to get that kind of very highest level image quality. And then again, lenses, whether it's say the Simlux 50mm 1.4, a spherical for a normal lens, or the 28mm Elmerit for a wide lens, or the 98mm macro Elmar for a longer lens. Again, if you're looking for the very best, then these lenses are absolutely fantastic, but they won't make pictures for you. So what I mean by that, if I was in the hotel I was shooting in yesterday, if I didn't have the model, I'd have no picture. I'd just have a bed. If I didn't have the light, I'd have no photo because there was so little daylight, it would have just been a completely dark, boring, rubbish image. If the model had not posed and smiled in that particular moment or that particular way, again, it could have just been a non-flattering photo of a person on a bed with no feeling whatsoever. Again, you might not think it's a special photo. I'm not saying it is a special photo. I'm just saying I like this particular image more than some of the other photos. I shot with the same model because everything came together in terms of flattering 
uh, body posture, a captivating face or emotion. The composition probably helped because I know from taking more photos in that sequence that if I turn the camera slightly, then, then it's perhaps less flattering. The lens was important being the lens focal length. The 50mm lens really worked in this example. And that was a kind of the sweet spot for that particular pose to get the look we were both happy with. So the lens was important. I could not have shot that with the iPhone and had the same kind of compression because an iPhone is 28mm lens and not 50mm. I could have still taken a nice picture, but it would have looked slightly different. And in terms of camera, I could have shot that with potentially any of my cameras that had a 50mm lens. And as long as the pose and the motion was the same, the lighting was the same, the 50mm lens was the same, it didn't really matter too much what kind of camera body I was using because all the important things were already taken care of before you get to the camera bit. Okay, I'll stop it there because I'm sure there's probably nobody left watching anyway and people have clicked off to watch the funny cat videos. Again, just my two P's worth and maybe it just might make you think in terms of if you keep seeing me posting videos about these expensive cameras or these expensive lenses, often the case, you don't need any of those to make a nice picture. You really can get away with a smartphone or like a 50 pound film camera from the likes to say Minolta, where you can get a lens and a camera for 50 pounds. The equipment isn't as important as all the other aspects in the picture. As long as the equipment will let you capture the image, that's all you need. Now, as I said at the start of the video, that's not to say that I'm gonna stop posting camera reviews and lens reviews. I'm posting these for people that want to get the best of the best possible photos, assuming they've already got everything else covered. Assuming they can control the lighting, the timing, the emotion, the lenses, the, what else we said? Composition and editing. Assuming all of those are taken care of, then I think it is nice to look at trying to up your game by getting the best camera or lens that you can afford. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts of the criteria I've listed. What's important to you? If you're a landscape photographer, what's the most important, say top three or four items? If you're a street photographer, again, what's the top three or four items? If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe. If you have an interest in portraiture and lighting and the kind of things I do in my day-to-day -day photography, join us on Patreon especially because that's becoming more of like a teaching platform where I'm showing how I light photos, how I, what gear I'm using, working with models behind the scenes, that kind of thing. I guess to finish, after everything I've just said, back soon with more camera reviews 